Building the best character is a challenging process and there are three signs to look out for when trying to determine what's best for them. It's no secret that Genshin Impact has deep foundations of a gacha game and the first thing that comes to mind is resource management. The more time or money you spend, the more improvements you're able to make and in order to take advantage of everything you're presented in the game, there are a couple of things you need to consider before you heavily invest into your character. And the first thing that comes to mind is that even though the majority of gameplay is all about the elemental combat, sometimes it's not the element that defines the character and can lead you to a wrong impression of them. And the best example to give would be the newest character, Shen Yen. Her alignment is the pyro element and yet it would be very inefficient to focus on artifacts that provide pyro damage or set bonuses and instead she is an excellent physical damage dealer and even more surprisingly she's also a good support character as well that maximizes her physical damage. But this doesn't mean her pyro shield and burst are lacking and the better definition would be that they simply exist for utility. Taking care of enemies cryo shields or absorbing pyro attacks is an excellent addition to whether you're a damage dealer or supporter. Basically once you identify where the majority of damage comes from it's best to capitalize on that source of strength and instead gather and improve artifacts for that type of damage. Now after you identify the character's true potential, the next step would be to create a long-term plan for their talents. Since your only source of materials to improve these talents past level 6 are the weekly bosses, you are left at the mercy of randomness to grow in power. And this is why it's crucial to decide which talents to focus on first, since the more you level it, the better it becomes. But if you spread yourself too thin and level all three talents at the same time, you could end up with less desirable performance, since it's a very rare case that each talent for a character provides the same amount of value, especially if you're going to focus on a single role. For example, Shin Yen is a flexible character and can be either support or main damage dealer, but if you're going to use her purely for support, then there's no need to level her basic attacks even past level 1 and instead focus on either her shield or burst as the first talent to max out. All in all, always first identify which part of the character you believe is going to be the strongest and build the artifacts and weapons for them appropriately, and when it comes to talents, first decide which role you want for your character to perform and level their talents accordingly. For a character to be weak or strong is a relative term, which means it really depends how far you're into the game. And the best way to determine that would be to take a look at your current adventure rank. So when you're just starting out, right up until rank 35, you're going to be mostly gathering random artifacts from world bosses and treasure chests, so the only thing that matters to you are the main stats, while substats and set bonuses are more of an afterthought. However, once you hit rank 45, things start to get interesting since you're now able to farm 5 star artifacts consistently, and that's when stuff like set bonuses and substats start to matter. This doesn't mean you shouldn't try to get set bonuses before rank 45, but they are definitely harder to do since most of your resin is going to be spent on world bosses and weapon or talent materials. And the reason why artifacts are left at the very last step for improving your character is because they are the providers of the most power, but at the same time, they are also extremely random and inconsistent. On the other hand, when it comes to your character, weapons and talents, there is nothing random about them and the power is constant and reliable, while obtaining good artifacts could take days if not weeks until you get even a single piece that satisfies your character's build. But if you're looking for artifact suggestions and other build ideas, make sure to follow us on Twitter, link in the description. Now there's one thing that's definitely worth taking a closer look at and that is the goblet artifact. Although things like plume artifact can give you a nice increase in your flat attack stat, the next best investment would be to obtain a goblet that complements your character's main source of damage. It's almost always a win-win situation with this specific artifact with only few exceptions that mostly revolve around support characters that special in healing or utility. But if you're concerned about damage, whether it's your main damage dealer or backup damage dealer, then getting a goblet with an elemental or physical damage bonus is going to do wonders for you. And when it comes to support characters, if you notice that they're there to heal or provide something else besides damage, then it's best to capitalize on this by either investing into energy recharge artifacts or even elemental mastery. In short, artifacts make up the majority of your character's power, but it heavily depends on how far you're into the game and the safest investment to make your character stronger would be by aiming for a goblet with a damage bonus first, especially if they're focused on dealing damage. Evaluating if your character is weak or strong based on their individual skills is not always the best approach since this game is all about team building first. And this is why you wouldn't see insane damage numbers if there wasn't Bennett, Mona or Sucrose along with many others that can help you achieve this outcome. But damage isn't always the answer and the time you spend trying to survive or dodge incoming attacks could otherwise be used as an idea to consider having teammates that can heal, provide shields or even crowd control. However, sometimes there can also be a teammate that could be pulling you back. For example, 
example, one of the worst combinations to build in the game would be Razor and Chong Yun, since Razor is all about physical damage and Chong Yun's elemental steel will transform the attacks into cryo damage, which heavily hinders Razor's damage output. There's also some characters like Bennett, whose last constellation turns melee weapon damage dealer's attacks into pyro, and that's basically putting yourself into the same situation as with Chong Yun. But besides awkward team compositions that could make your character weaker, the main thing that you could be missing out on getting your character to be stronger are some specific artifacts and weapons. For example, Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers is probably the best and cheapest way to get the extra attack for your main damage dealer, even if you have a single copy of this weapon. Then there's also awesome artifact sets like the Noblesse Oblige that gives 20 extra damage to burst attacks, or the Instructor's Artifact Set that boosts everyone's elemental mastery by 120. But to summarize, even if Genshin Impact is all about elemental combat, it's always worth examining what is the main source of damage or value your character provides and capitalize on that first. This also means that when you pick a role for your character, try to optimize their talents by choosing which ones to invest into first before you spread yourself too thin. And when it comes to artifacts which provide the biggest boost in performance, it's best to focus on them as your final endgame goal and quick improvements like Goblet with a damage bonus can help you land somewhere in the middle in terms of your resin and character's damage output. Finally, there's not much individuality when it comes to this game and team building will help you realize your favorite character's true potential, but sometimes some of the teammates will have a better fit with someone else instead. Let us know in the comments which character you're currently building and what's your favorite thing about them. Also, don't forget to subscribe and enable the bell notification on, as well as make sure to gently press the like button. Thank you for watching us.